Hello and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And on screen we've got today's puzzle, which is by Scott Strosal, who many of you will know either because you've tried puzzles that we've covered in the videos on the channel, or because you tried last month's Puzzle Hunt on Patreon, which was an absolute joy. Uh, so many of you loved that, and many of many of you finished it, which is an incredibly good effort. That those puzzles were not not straightforward. Um, even when Mark and I came to do the videos, we did we had to do five videos to cover that puzzle hunt, and we'd solved the puzzles before. Obviously, when we tested the puzzle hunt, and even when you you're resolving the puzzles, it was still like, whoa, these are not that easy. Um, so anyway, the the genesis of this puzzle is our Discord server, and this is one of the highest rated puzzles that has appeared on the Discord server in recent weeks. So we know we're in for a, uh, a treat today. Um, and I'll run through the rules in just a second. Uh, a couple of things I want to mention first. Uh, the first is, in a, I do read all the comments that we get on the videos, and we had a very amusing comment the other day that I thought I'd share with you. Here you go. Um, I presume this lady here is some sort of bot telling us that she's single. Um, and um, am I or the other crazy responded, in this channel, it only counts if you're naked as well, which I thought was extremely amusing. So, uh, yeah, well done to Am I or the Other Crazy for coming up with a moment of good humour that I thought I would share with you. Um, now, the other thing I just wanted to say is we get a lot of email traffic as well, and especially at the moment with the UK going into another lockdown. I know lots of Europe is going into lockdowns uh, again as well. Um, we get a lot of people writing to say that they they find the channel useful for their mental health. I think because it distracts from the everyday life and we can take ourselves a couple of times a day into this wonderful, wonderful world of puzzles where we can just think about, you know, the logic of these things. And they always have logic and they always have solutions. And there is a great deal of pleasure to be garnered from them. So just to encourage you all really, um, you know, to to spread the word about Cracking the Cryptic. Um, I do think in times like this, the channel has got um, a small role to play uh, in being you know, helpful to people, giving them a bit of joy every day. So um, maybe, uh, maybe if you know somebody who you think might be interested in puzzles generally, it might be worth just letting them know about that we exist. Um, other than that, our Kickstarter campaign is still going really well. Um, thank you so much to all of those of you who've supported it so far. Do check it out if you haven't. This is our campaign to create the best Sudoku book there has ever been. And we're, it, I mean, it's so exciting. It's going to be a really, really, really wonderful book. Um, and, you know, I can guarantee you that. And there's a card on the screen if you want to take a look. Now, let's run through the rules of Scott's puzzle. We have got normal Sudoku rules apply. Uh, and normal killer Sudoku rules apply, which means that um, in cages, the digits must sum to the small clue in the top left hand corner of the cage. So these seven yellow cells have to sum up to 40 without repeating a digit. That's always very important to remember. Now, here's the complexity in today's puzzle. In addition, all cages contain a standard arrow clue, which is hidden. The circle part of the arrow will be at one end of the cage with the arrow extending along the cage to the other end. The arrow must fill the entire cage. The circle may be any number of digits and multi-digit totals are read in the direction of the arrow. Now that sounds much more complicated than I think it is and luckily Scott has provided us an example which I've put on the screen. So this is how this would work. Um, so a standard arrow clue for those of you who are unfamiliar with it uh, there's a digit in a circle with an arrow leaving the circle. And what, what you have to do is to make sure that the cells covered by the arrow, so in this case the four, the two, and the three, sum up to the digit inside the circle. So you can see four, two, and three sum to nine, and that's how this arrow here works. And in fact, that's why the cage also adds to 18. We've got four plus two plus three plus nine, that equals 18. Now this 15 clue is rather more complicated because in this case, we actually have a two cell circle and that has to be read from the far side of the cage. So it's not 21, this is 12. And you can see that the way we get the sum to 12 is as four plus eight. And indeed the 15 total for the cage is eight plus four plus two plus one. So that still works 
perfectly. So that is a bit of a head scratcher. I've got no idea uh, and no real experience with this sort of thing. So we will have to see how we go. All I know is this puzzle is meant to be brilliant and actually not too difficult, despite what you might think about those rules. So um, do have a go. The way to play, of course, is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking and see how we go. Um, so we've got lots of big cages today. I don't know whether it's best to start with big cages or small cages. I'm tempted actually to start with the small cages just to try and get my head around this. So if we, well, yeah, okay. So this has got to be a single digit in a circle. So, ah, okay, so this has just got to be six. So one side of this cage is equal to a six. Uh, and that will be the circled digit in the in, in for the arrow and then the other two cells will then also have to add up to six and six plus six is 12 and that knowledge bomb from cracking the cryptic oh my phone's buzzing at me never mind so if we've got okay so let's imagine this was the six that was in the circle these two cells would have to sum to six they could either be two four or one five and we wouldn't know which so we don't quite know we know this is six at one end, but we don't know much more than that, I think. Let's try 16. Is 16 just eight? I think it is. Yeah, okay, I can make 16 work with an eight at one end of the cage in the circle. And then the other three cells, let's imagine this was the eight. These three squares would add up to eight. So they would have to include a one, and they'd either be one, two, five, or one, three, four. Okay, so we don't we don't know which side is an eight, but we do know there is a one in this cage. And I'm presuming there's only one way that you can make 16 work. If you try a two digit total, if you try like 12, that would be 15, 13 would be, ah, ah, okay, that's interesting. That's interesting, so if you, if you start with a number like 12, it's always giving any any digit that starts with a one is giving uh, as, as, as its arrow clue as it's so the digits in the circle always should be in a cage that adds up to an odd number. So in fact, we might be able to get 25 by doing this because you can see if we if we increase the 12 to 13, that has a double effect. Firstly, obviously this digit has changed from two to three. Again, another knowledge bomb. <laughs> um, but secondly, what's happened is that the total for these three has increased by one as well. So as you increase the totals like this, you're always going up in steps of two. So once we know that 12 is giving an odd number, we know that anything is giving an odd number. So 16 is not quite enough. 17 is perfect because 17 plus 1 plus 7 is 25. So, oh, but I don't know which way round it goes. Oh, bobbins. Um, okay, well, so the 25 has to be giving us, has to be a 17 clue. And it's either set 1, 7 that way or 1, 7 this way. And that means odd things. For example, it means that square can't be a one because we know there's a one in one of those two squares, therefore there can't be a one here, but I'm not sure. Probably what we probably what I'm going to do actually is I'm just going to go through the grid and mark off all of these totals. So let's look at 38. So 38. Actually, let's check what 20, 20 what does 21 give us? Does that give us an e no, 21 gives us an even number. Right, okay, so we're probably looking for a 20 number to get to 38. 29, 20, 29 gives 40, doesn't it? 29 plus 2 plus 9 is 40. So 28 is working. Ah, right, so 28. We need 28 to make this one, which tells us there's a 2 in one of those, and then, oh, wrong pencil mark, sorry. 2 in one of those, 8 in one of these. So that's interesting. There's got to be a two in row eight. In So there's no two in those squares. 
Oh, let's carry on. 32 in 7 is again an even number. So it must be a 20 number we're looking for. 26, 20, 26 is too many. 25 is correct. 25 plus 7 is 32. Right, so this one is 25. Twos in those. Ah, so that's interesting as well in terms of geometry. That means there's no two in those squares in box five because there must be a two in one of those squares. This is going to be very interesting, I think, this puzzle. Um, right, let's look at 40. Oh, 40 I looked at down here. Yeah, 40 was 29. So twos in those squares, nines in these squares. And obviously, I'm not saying there is definitely a 9 here. I'm saying that there, there is a 9 in one of those two positions in this cage. Now, 35 won't work with a 20 number. So is it going to be a 30 number? 31? 31. Yes, it's 31. OK, so 31 goes like that. And then 24, that's got to be... So that's... Ah, 20. Yeah, 21. So that's 21 like that. 21 plus 2 plus 1 is most certainly 24. So there we go. We are... We've now labelled the grid up. But as I was going through, I was expecting to find, you know, something like this eliminating a digit. But I didn't spot it there. 40... 40 in 7 cells. Ah, that's 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 really cool. This cage has not got a 1 or a 4 in it. How do I know that? Well, it's a 7 cell cage. What would a 9 cell cage add up to? That's the first question. Well, a 9 cell cage, because it can't contain a repeated digit, would contain all of the digits from 1 to 9. If you add up all of the digits from 1 to 9, you get 45. So I know that a 7-cell cage, adding up to 40, must be missing two digits that sum to 5. Now there are only two ways that two digits can sum to 5, with a 2 and a 3, or with a 4 and a 1. But I know there's a 2 in this cage, so there must also be a 3, and there can't be a 1 and a 4. So if there is no 1 or 4 in this cage, oh, it's very close to being interesting with the 1s over here. Or even with the... No, not quite. So we've got a 40 cage... 7 cell 35 cage. That's missing two digits that sum to 10. And it contains a 3 and a 1. So it's not missing 3, 7 or 1, 9. So it's this cage is missing 2, 8 or 4, 6. This cage, another 7 cell cage, contains a 5 is missing two cells that add up to 13. So it does have an 8 in it. And it's missing 4, 9 or 6, 7. 38 in 7 cells. is mi Ah, that's got a 2 in it. So this is missing 1, 6 or 3, 4. Again, it's... I think I'm missing something about this. Is it these 2s? Oh, yes, it is. Ah, look, look, look at this. This is very clever. Can this square be a 2? Well, the answer is no, because you can't repeat a 2 in a cage. So all of those squares now wouldn't be able to be 2s. Neither would those because of the 2 here. And we know that there is a 2 in one of those cells of the 38 cage. So you, if this is a 2, you couldn't place a 2 in box 7. That is gorgeous. So this is not a 2. And if this is not a 2, this is not a 1. And we are off to the races with a 2 and a 1. Oh, look. Look at that. That's pointing at that square. Now, that means that this can't be the 31, which means the 31 must be this side. Ah, <laughs> the 40 cage has not got a 1 or a 4 in it. So by Sudoku, this square's a 1. That means that's not a 1. Oh, that's so in. That's so nearly good, isn't it? It's still. We still don't know which side of the eight is, though. We just know the one is in one of those cells. So we've got ones. 
One's in one of these three positions. I'm going to struggle with my pencil marks today, I think, because I'm trying to keep track of things across boxes. This two is seeing... Ah, this two is seeing that square. So this can't be 25 in this direction. Um, so that must be... Twi ah, this must be 25 coming downwards. Which... Is that useful? Uh, can't put a two in there. Everything so far has been quite linear. So, how do I use this to my advantage? That's the question, two. Oh, I'm not sure. Um, hmm. Sorry. <laughs> I'm stuck. Um, there must be a four in one of those squares. Let's put that in. Twenty one here. Is that restricted? Those ah okay yes maybe maybe if yeah okay so those four squares have got to add up to 21 now what if there was no three in them if there was no three in the yellow squares because there can be no one or two because that would repeat a digit in the cage these squares would have to be four five six and seven and four, five, six, and seven, I think add to 22. I'm just gonna check that. Yes, so there must be a three in the yellow squares. Now the three therefore must go here. So now three is in one of those two squares by Sudoku because it can't repeat in this cage. Oh, this is very clever, look. This is very clever, it's beautiful setting because now it forces a three into the 38 cage. Why does that matter? Well, we know the 38 cage is missing two cells that sum to seven. Well, it's now not missing three and four because it has a three in it. It's not missing two and five. So this cage is missing one and six. So there must be a one and a six in those squares. Uh, is that helpful? Yes, it is. Oh, this is beautiful. Again, the geometry. This is a stunning puzzle. Look at the one here. That's ruling a one out from those squares. This one is ruling a one out from those squares. We know there's no one and six in the 38 cage, so you can't have a one in those squares. So there's a one down here, which means there must be a one there. That one is seeing... That one is seeing the this, this 17 possibility for the 25 cage. So this is not 17 now. This is 17. That means that's not a 1. This is not a 1. And. Okay. That's great. But. This one is seeing that square, look. So that's not one, which means this is one. So now there's a one in one of those two. Ah, there's a one in one of these two squares, and it can't be that one because that already has a one in its cage. So the one goes there. So there's a one in one of those two squares. And we've actually done very well. We've got seven ones placed now. Um... Yeah, okay, which is grand and everything, but now, now I'm stuck. So now we've got these three squares adding up to 18. Don't think we know how to do that yet. Hmm, so where do we go now? The six, ah! Yeah, the six, um, the 12 clue can't contain a one anymore. 
So we know that this is now 2, 4, 6 in some order. We know that's not 6. So if this is 2, 4, that can't be 2. So there's a 2 in one of those two squares. Ah, beautiful. So this can't be a 2. And if this can't be a 2, that can't be an 8. Therefore, the 2 and the 8 go to the other side of that cage. That means there's a... Oh, hang on. This... Yeah, look. Where does 2 go in box, um, box 5 now? It can't go there, and it can't go here, and it can't repeat in this cage, so the 2 has to go here. That means that that square is a 4, a 6, and a 2. This, oh, this is so clever. I just, this puzzle, by the way, Scott, if you're listening, or any other great compiler, this puzzle has potential. Sometimes I do puzzles and I think, goodness me, this could become a mainstream puzzle because it's so, it works just so well. And this, this is one of those puzzles. This is absolutely, it's so much fun to solve, but the logic is beautiful. Um, so now look, this two, this two is seeing this square. So that means this is not 29 in that direction, it's 29 in this direction, which means this is a two by Sudoku because of these twos interacting. In fact, we must be able to do most of the twos in the grid now, can't we? Uh, there's a two six pair in box, um, box nine. Let's get rid of the six pencil mark. What about twos up here? There's got to be a two in one of those cells. It would be very nice to know which way round they were because that would tell me whether or not this this is at one three four or one two five going along with the eight. Okay, so now ah got something 35 cage the 35 cage now simply cannot have a two in it because of those twos so we know it's also missing an eight so it does have a four and a six in it so this these squares have got to be four six five i suppose seven and nine is that helpful no five in there because of this five Um, hmm, that doesn't seem brilliant actually. There's now got to be an 8 up there just because there can't be an 8. Because there can't be an 8 in the 35 cage, the 8 in column 4 has to shift up to the top of the grid. Hmm, okay. Don't think that's enough. Where are? Where does eight go in this in in box uh, nine? You can't repeat eight in the cage. So eight has to hide in the corner. Oh yeah, there we go. That's looking at that square. So that shifts the eight there, shifts the two here. Now there's no two in this. So this is one three four, um, and that means that's not one. That's not four. One three four, oh, nearly. Oh, come on, I must get more from that. Those two squares are a 5-9 pair, therefore, to complete the box. Apologies if I'm missing eliminations there. I have the feeling I am. Um, this 8, box an 8 into that square. So this square here has to be 4, 6, 7 or 9. So, and if we have a look at row 2 of the grid, you can see... We still need five, six, and seven. Unfortunately, I don't think we know very much about the options there. Now, we don't have enough five, sixes, and sevens in the grid. But now it's really interesting because an awful lot of these cages, I've actually done most of the work in. So I know these three add up to 18, don't I? So 18 plus 6 is 24. 
So these three squares add up to 21 to complete the column, which is almost useful, but not. I can't even eliminate a 4 from there. Uh, ah, <laughs> the 32 cage is missing two cells that sum to 13, but it has a 5 in it, so it must have an 8 in it. And the 8, look, where can the 8 go? Only there. Which means what exactly? It means it means there's an eight in one of those two cells. And over here. Ah, Sudoku, that's got to be an eight. That might that eight might be interesting because we know that Yeah, here we go. Um how do we make those two squares add up to the required number, which is going to be 8? Well, these had to add up to 18. These now have to add up to 10. Without using 1, 9, 2, 8, or 3, 7, these are 4 and 6. That does look helpful, because that's not 4 and 6, therefore. This is not 4 anymore. There is definitely a 4 in one of those two squares. Ah, so where does the 4 go in this box? It's got to be in one of those three squares, but it can't be in the 40 cage because the 40 cage is missing a 4 and a 1. So the 4 goes down there. That's not 4 anymore. This is 4 by Sudoku. That means this, this cage needs a 9. Um, so it's missing 6 and 7, and there must be a 9 in one of these two squares. And therefore there must be a 3 to complete the balance of this cage. And the 3 means that this square's the 9, this square's the 3. This puzzle is sensational. It is just gorgeous. Nine. Uh, so what do we get from that? Anything? We get six, six, sevens and nines into those squares. Six, seven. This square is five, seven. That's just a five or a seven. It can't be nine because of the nine here. Now that's interesting. Look. Because now we know that there must be a 9 in this column. There must be a 9 in one of those two cells. Now once there's a 9 in one of these two cells, this square can't be a 9 or it would repeat the 9 in the cage. So this becomes a 4, 6, 7 triple. And the only place a 9 can go in the column is there, which gives us a 5 here, which gives us a 9 here. That might be useful here, but it's also useful there. This is 5, 9... This is four, six, seven, and ah. Okay, well that's that was still helpful because these squares now seventeen. It's not it's well these three have to add to seventeen. These have to add up to eight with ah without being one seven or two six. So this is three and five. There's a five here. Five goes here. Three goes here. Eight goes there, replacing pencil marks. The two at the top gives us a two and a six. This three gives us a four there. Now, if we look down this column, I've not put seven into it yet. So seven must go there. Uh, sorry, I'm now, six is giving me a six and a four. Let's put those in, that's not six. Five, seven and nine to complete this row. You can see there's nines here and here. So the nine must hide in the corner. These two squares are a five, seven pair. Now, have I actually used up all of the logic in these boxes now? I think I must have, I'm very close to having used up all the logic. So I think really it's just a test of Sudoku from here on out. Um, Threes have got to appear in one of those two. Three, six, seven, and eight. There's an eight in one of those two squares. Three, six, seven, eight. No, we don't know enough about six. Ah, that's a seven by Sudoku. Look, the seven must go there. Once the seven goes there, that becomes the one. That becomes the three. That fixes the three at the bottom. These two squares are a six, nine pair. Now, if we look down this column, you can see we need four and five, I think, into those two squares. 
and that means that square should be a 9. And that does look like it's what it should be. This is 4, 5, oopsie, this is 4, 5 or 6. Still not quite, not quite revealing its secrets to us, but I think we're getting close. Two, three, four, five, eight. This is a four or a five. Oh, oopsie, I didn't mean to do that. What I wanted to do was to put four, five and eight here. Now this can't be four because it's in this box. Five, eight there. Um, five, nine, four, six, seven. What's going on? Why can't I finish this? It must be nearly finished. Five, ah, this square's a six, isn't it? Because of this three. Three, six. This square is not six. This square is not six. This five, seven pair means this square is a six. This square is a four. Now, is that the final, uh, the final piece of the jigsaw? Now, this four must be a four at the top now. Oh, Simon, come on, hurry up. This is appalling solving. Um, three, five, and seven. I still can't see how to do it. Three, five, seven. Oh, this seven, how long has that been sitting there? Sorry, everybody. That is absolutely abysmal, but never mind. I've still had fun and I hope you guys have too. This is just a brilliant, brilliant puzzle. Um, now the four here fixes the four and the five. Now the seven goes down there. This three, five, this five, nine is fixed by the five, nine over there. That's probably been sitting there for months as well. Nine and the seven go in. This is a three, seven pair, which we can now do. That fixes the three and the five, the five and the eight, the eight, and this should be a six, I think. And that's all the cells. Is that say correct? It is correct. Lovely, absolutely brilliant, Scott. Apologies for my uh, ineptitude in finishing that with alacrity, but I did my best and I got number blind. This happens sometimes, but uh, I hope you enjoyed that even a smidge as much as I did. Do let me know in the comments and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.